Ash reckons I need to do more voiceovers for um, viewers like me with ADD that don't like reading, so there's how to snap an axle and repairs in the shop. There's probably a CV from last time. Right guys, I'm going to show you how to replace the diff in your patrol. First things first, you're going to need uh, this tool right here. You cannot do the job without this tool, so make sure you get that and um, yeah, you'll be set. So we've got the GQ up on the hoist. Just so happens I bought some new diffs the other week. So they are right here. They're 4-6 ratio. So doing the swaparoo. And then eventually go bigger tyres, so that'll be perfect. Also doing a drum to disc conversion. I wasn't going to bother because I was going to go GU diff soon, but um, need to repair it. So going to convert it to disc. So I've got this diff here that's ready for discs, but it didn't come with any. So I'll have to prep these lines, blow them out, and then just so happens I picked up some axles for free the other the other month. So I can actually just take the disc backing plate and calipers off them and whack them straight on my new diff. Straight in. And then we'll go for a drive and see how the 4.6s go. I forgot to tell you why I was going to 4.6 ratios. 4.6 ratios are shorter than 4.11s so it's a better final drive for 30 set. 37s and 36s. It's like driving around on 31s um, with the final drive that you get from that. Also thinking about selling this old beast, the OG GQ that I had. Can't decide. What do you guys reckon? Don't take your shocks off till your diff is supported because you're going to have a bad time. Okay? Also going to put these adjustable lappers in that I've been meaning to put in for a while. Uh, when I went in the lift, it uh, pulled the springs out of alignment pretty much. Drives fine, goes alright off road, but yeah, it's not quite right. The springs are, yeah, on an angle. So, should really put longer arms in here as well, but I want to do a long arm conversion on it, so not worried about them. I'll just um, shorten these up with adjustables to get it right for now. A little bit heavier. They're like zero kilos. These are probably one kilo. No, they're heavier than that. But they're a little bit shorter and I'll be adjusting them even shorter again on this. That's a left hand and right hand thread. So you just undo those lock nuts and then zing that and it extends or expands or shrinks to the right setting. Uh, for some reason I didn't film the old diff coming out but here's the new 4.6 on the trolley jack, ready to slot right in. Just getting the shocks out of the way there, getting the diff into position. Lower control arms going on here, just to secure the diff in place. Get the rest of the stuff on in a second. Getting the left control arm on here as well and just positioning it. You enjoy my random music in the background there. Now I just lower the vehicle down onto the diff, get it a bit closer to where it's going to be riding with the four inches of lift to um, get the drive shaft on and everything else.
adjustable lappers are in now. Just going to give them a quick talk with a rattle gun. Uh, shocks are still undone so I can get the springs in. I haven't got uh, long shocks and I don't have spring retainers or dropout cones so I can't go longer shocks yet. Alright, drive shaft's going on. Torquing those bolts up real quick with a quick zing on the rattle gun. Be sure to go around with a couple of red lines on all those bolts, make sure they're all tight. That's the passenger spring in. Go around the other side, pop the other one in. Now the driver's side going in. Just getting the height right to pop her in without popping the other side out. Take a little bit of manhandling and uh, positioning to get them in there sweet. This is where your spring, your spring should locate. Goes around to there, locks in here, and that little tab there. Now I've got the shocks on so I can uh, lift it up on the hoist and get under there without the diff dropping all the way to the ground again and everything falling out of where it's meant to be. And I've just got to hook the brake up to the lines. I've got a line locker on there to stop any fluid coming out so it makes bleeding easier when I need to bleed it. Big extendo. This is how you undo super tight Phillips head bolts or screws. See that puppy? First CRC. Then good Phillips head. Oh, it's gotta be a through through tang screwdriver, otherwise you tap the end and it'll break. So you do that. Shock it. Sometimes it'll come straight undone. Other times you get one of these on there. And you're going to want to put all your body weight pushing that screwdriver into the screw so it doesn't strip. Definitely anti-seize those in if you're putting them back in. Now I've just got my come along chain block to pull the diff into position to get the pad hard rod on. Uh, if you don't have one of them you can use a ratchet strap but this is easier because you can go back and forward nicely with them. This brake conversion is done. Four sixes are in. Just need to move on to the fronts now. Had to change this yoke. Um, TD yoke's bigger than the RD yoke. Onto the front now. Gotta rip the wheel bearings off, king pins, calipers, the Pads are fully worn, so I'll be doing them as well. And pulling the diff center out, so I have to take this, uh, what do you call them? Tie rods off. Take the tie rod off so I can get the diff out. And then swap the gears inside the center. I want to keep my center because it's got an e locker in it. 
so it's a bit more mucking around otherwise I could have just thrown the other diff in also this diff's got all nice Nissan seals in it and bearings so yeah I want to reuse it didn't take too long to find the breakage here's the spindle that has the wheel bearings running on it and there's me snapped axle there so and there's my CV look at that there's a freaking huge it's just exploded it's a huge crack in it there yeah. Ooh. I've got to pull the rest of this uh, hub off to get it so pull the kingpins out and whatnot now this is the quick easy way to get um, your tie rod off loosen your castle nut but leave it on there just in case you slip you don't damage the thread then you can put the nut back on no troubles works every time trust me this has expanded so much that it won't freaking come out of the knuckle now it's gonna have to punch that ball out it's freaking locked itself in there to close this crack up to get my axle out. So uh, Perry got home on Monday after work. She drives 45 minutes to work down the highway, so doing 100k an hour. Um, she drove home another 45 minutes. Disclaimer, not having to dig at my awesome wife. Um, I had actually been crank bashing the day before yeah, um, with just three wheels with the diff locked. Uh, so I probably out. wrecked a fair bit of it as well. And one. it was Sunday night, so by the time I finally got it out um, with Ash's help, I'd forgotten to take it out of four-wheel drive and turn the diff lock off. So I go outside and I'm like, hey babe, how's everything? Blah, 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 usual stuff. And then she goes, oh, did you mean to leave it in four-wheel drive and the diff lock on? And I said, no, I definitely didn't. So it turns out she's driven to work with the diff lock in, hubs obviously unlocked, um, spinning the broken axle the whole way there, um, doing 100k an hour down the highway. And here we have the thrust washers from each side. This is the passenger side. That's the original one. It's got half a million k's on it. Hardly any wear compared to a new one. They don't wear very much at all. And here's the driver's side one absolutely shot so that's the outer casing of the cv got it out did not want to shrink once i knocked the ball out absolutely wrecked it but i got it out which is good because i thought i was gonna have to cut it out with the oxy and i didn't bring the oxy today because my wife's driving the work kit. <laughs> patrol diffs hold so much oil like i'm a diesel mechanic so i work on trucks an earth moving gear <laughs> some trucks i've worked on literally hold like 600 liters but these hold i don't know seven and a half liters or something it's a bloody lot of oil for a four-wheel drive big diffs for big power she's all back together thank goodness ah, diffs topped up everything's tight greased now just need to bleed the rear brakes with my bleed kit and then off to see my nieces for their birthday yeah yeah
Hummer spit lava, heat like De Niro and Patino, Manifesto, Wu-Tang, Gambino, lay it down, then I fly off like the hero. Hey.